Hey friends, I am so happy you're here. In today's video, I have several Dollar Tree spooky season or Halloween DIYs that I know you're gonna love. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay friends, I don't know if you have seen these ginormous new unfinished wood shapes from Dollar Tree, but you guys know Dollar Tree is really impressing me here lately. So anyway, a long time ago, probably about four years ago, I did a DIY very similar to this ghost, but with the smaller ghost. So I knew with the bigger ones that I wanted to recreate it. So I just take off the tag and then I put a little piece of painter's tape in the back and then fill in the hole with some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. And then I spray paint the entire ghost with my hammered silver spray paint. Now, if you guys don't know where I'm going with this, I want to create a galvanized look so once the spray paint dries I'm just gonna take a sponge from Dollar Tree now disclaimer I don't like these square sponges but I didn't have the bath sponge so if you can get the round bath sponge cut it into four and it makes the perfect dabbing on your project and it looks a lot more realistic but I just kind of worked with what I had so once the spray paint was dry like I said I take a sponge and I dab some elephant Waverly chalk paint all around the ghost just to tone down that silver color and then I had this natural sponge in my stash and I just took that dabbed it into the white Waverly chalk paint and dabbed that over the elephant and if there were spots that I went a little too heavy-handed with the white I did just go back over it with the elephant once that was completely dry, then I take my mini chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all the way around the eyes, the mouth, and the ghost itself. Now, as always, you can leave the dry brushing out if you don't particularly like it, but I feel like it just brings out the details in this project. You can let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Next, I wanna make a little banner for my ghost. So I had this Dollar Tree fabric. I thought it was really perfect. Now, in the end, I kinda of wish that I had picked something a little different just because it does blend in with the faux galvanized metal. However, I still love the way it turned out, but you can always change out the fabric or make it to your liking. It's totally up to you. I also had these banner pieces from Dollar Tree that are burlap, and I really like these because the back is pretty solid it has almost like a plastic piece in the back so that way these were really easy to transfer on the letters um, but if you just have regular burlap you can totally use that as well and I started out making out a or making a small banner but I didn't like how small it was so I did just take my permanent marker I kind of laid that down on my banner piece to see the sizing that I needed I eyeballed a banner piece and just drew it on cut it out and then when I was satisfied with the sizing then I just used that one as a guide to cut out two more Next, I'm just gonna use the burlap fabric pieces to kind of get a gauge of how big of, of a piece of the fabric that I needed. And I just roughly cut that piece out. And then once I had that one piece cut out, then I just held up the burlap pieces and cut them out individually. Now, because the fabric is all rolled up, I did just go ahead and kind of fold it back the other way to get it as flat as possible. You could also use an iron, but y'all know me, I'm super impatient. So I just kind of folded it and then eventually it does lay flat. I then take my mini chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all the way around the burlap banner pieces. If you did not know, Chalk Couture actually has ink for shirts and cups 
what that is, it is permanent when you heat set it. So I take my B and O transfer and as always, all of my Chalk Couture items that I use will be linked down in the description box below. And if you guys would like to get 40% off of all of the Chalk Couture items on my site, then just let me know, text my number, the word chalk, and I can get you all of that information. I'll leave that on the screen. But I just take my B and my O transfer and I transfer on boo boo to each of the banner pieces and then i dry it with my blow dryer now to make it permanent all you have to do is just make sure it's super dry put a piece of butcher paper over your shirt or whatever it is that you are heat setting and then you will just heat it up for 45 seconds and then it becomes permanent Next, I string on some jute, every other one, with a black bead and then a natural bead. I did get these beads from Dollar Tree. And then I'm going to drill two holes in the ghost hands. And then I start by putting one side of my jute into the hand and then tie a double knot. That way it doesn't go anywhere. And then before I add my banner pieces, I make sure to lay everything out. And then once I'm satisfied with the placement of each, then I go ahead and glue them down. And I did want to mention that I did leave two beads on either side of the start of the banner, if that makes sense. So I did two beads and then the B, one bead, and then the fabric, one bead, and so on and so forth. If that makes no sense, then you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And when I glue on the fabric pieces, I do just leave a tiny bit at the top so I can kind of curl that over the jute just to make it look more realistic. Once I was done, I cut my jute on an angle so that it would go into the hole that I drilled. I then string it through and tie another double knot in the back. Last but not least, I made two simple bows, the black and white one a little bit bigger and the jute a little smaller, glued them together and then glued those to the top of my ghost. And look how absolutely stunning this turned out. This has actually been a fan favorite and I'm so glad that people are loving it. I did share it on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. So if you guys are not following me over there, I always release my projects early so you can have early access to them if you follow me. I also live out my life on Instagram stories. So if you're interested in that, I will leave all of my links down below as well as the pinned comment. And let me know what you guys think of DIY number one. If you are enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate if you would share it out. Subscribe if you haven't already become part of my crafty family. That way you don't miss anything good coming up for the holiday season. I'm also super excited because as you guys know, if you've been around for any length of time, then I I just recently lost 80 pounds of fat throughout my journey here on YouTube and many of you have always wondered how I did it and would like a step-by-step -step guide so I just put together a 21 page guide giving you literally a seven day meal plan snack ideas and much more this thing is jam-packed with all of the information supplements you need to take all of that good stuff in one document which is linked down in the description box as well as the pinned comment I also also have some really big news I am going to be doing a YouTube course for you guys whether you want to do DIY or just a YouTube channel and you just want to be told what to do and how to do it the wait list is also in that same exact link and I'm so excited with that being said I love y'all so much I appreciate you for all the love and support and let's jump back into today's video For DIY number two, I'm gonna take this sign from Dollar Tree and it was a little bit too long. So I just laid out the transfer that I was going to use. And the beauty with these transfers, y'all, you can use them over and over and over again, probably up to about 50 uses if you take good care of them, like washing them properly and just keeping them nice and clean. Um, but I just kind of laid that out, marked it where I needed it, and then I used my utility knife knife. 
I scored that line about five times, bent it backwards, and then cut it from the back, and then cut off the excess and sanded that edge down smooth. Now, this is my little mini finger zip sander. I love this thing so much. You can change out the pads. It has different grits to it, and that is linked down in my Amazon shop in the description as well as the pinned comment. So once I have it cut down, then I'm just going to take some white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give it a distress coat of paint to make sure that some of that black is showing through. It just makes it look nice and spooky. But as always, if you do not like the distress look, you can always cut that or you can always skip that and make it a nice thicker coat of paint. Next, I'm going to take a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and this transfer does have these are called chalkable chip cutouts so it has like a skeleton finger pointing in one direction and i knew that i just wanted to kind of have that as a template um, but if you don't want to buy the cutout all you have to do is just paint your piece of foam board transfer that on and then i'm using a hot knife to cut out the shape it just makes it so much easier to cut out um, but again if you don't have the shape to trace it on just paint your piece of foam board uh, transfer on your image and then cut it out around the image if that makes sense so I did it backwards obviously I had the cut out but I'm just going to keep that as like a template and then I kind of um, broke this in half on purpose because when you paint the paper side of foam board it does like to kind of curl up but I knew if I kind of like broke it and then put it back together with popsicle sticks as you saw me do then it would not curl up on me so once I did that then I went ahead and painted both sides with my ink Waverly chalk paint and dried it really well with my blow dryer Next, I'm going to cut my transfer. I'm only going to use the top part of it. Actually, I'm going to use both pieces. I lied. <laughs> but I cut it apart, and this is very important. Before you transfer on to foam board, I did use a little bit of wax. You can get this in my chalk shop, or if you already have some, you only want to use a very, very tiny bit. And then I go ahead and transfer on my image. Once I'm done, then I peel back that transfer and y'all, this never gets old. This is why I love Chalk Couture so much. It's so quick, it's so easy, it doesn't take any time at all. And I didn't make sure to smooth it down as good as I usually do. Um, so a little bit did bleed through, but it's no big deal. I just let it dry and then paint it over those little pieces. And again, like I said, you can use these over and over again. You just wanna make sure that you wash them immediately after using them and then lay them sticky side up on a paper towel take another paper towel and dry the back really well and then let it air dry the rest of the way put it back on the backing sheet and you can have them for years to come I'm next gonna do the top sign and I just take the top of the transfer and transfer that on with my black paste and I absolutely love this image Next, I'm going to pull up my transfer, and you always want to pull in one direction, so you do not want to pull it from the corner. You want to kind of pull that one side up, hold your sign, and then slowly peel your transfer back, and that's how you can eliminate bleeding. Once I reveal that gorgeous image, again, I wash my transfer and leave it to dry. I then took a small skewer and poked a few holes in my faux finger. <laughs> and then I took these chains that I had left over from a different project. These are plant hangers from Dollar Tree. And I just took my pliers and I opened up one of the pieces, slid that on, and then used my pliers once again to close it. And I just kind of figured out how big I wanted it and separated the chain into two. Now, in the end, I did make this a little bit smaller. I just didn't like how far down it was hanging, if you will. 
Um, but you can be the judge of how short or long you want yours to be. Next, I laid it on my sign. I marked where I needed the holes to be and then I drilled in two holes on either side. I then took a piece from a different plant hanger and I just kind of put those in the holes on the signs. I made sure they were super flat and then I connected the bottom chain to the piece on the sign. And this is where I kind of figured out that it was a little bit too long for my liking. So like I said, I just went ahead and removed them, made them a little bit shorter, and then attached them once again. And that was it for this DIY. Y'all, this took me no time at all. And it seriously looks like something that you would pick up from a high-end store. And I'm super curious, as always, to hear which DIY is your favorite down in the comment section below. Moving on to the next DIY, I took these two candlesticks from Dollar Tree and two skeleton heads and first I just removed the tags off of the candle holders. Now these are two different sizes. If you like them to be the same size, you can just grab two of the same size. It's totally up to you. And originally I was going to spray paint these. So I just attached the heads to the candlesticks and you always want to glue on the foam first because if you try to glue on the candlestick the glue just dries super quick because it is metal and then I was going to spray paint it with this like natural colored spray paint so I originally covered the entire candlesticks with some painters tape but you're going to see here in a minute that that was a fail. You do not want to spray paint it because the spray paint will shrink your foam. So I went back to the drawing board. Thankfully, I had an extra one and I did paint it with my Cashew Waverly chalk paint on both of the skulls. Now, if you want to paint yours black or a different color, that's totally up to you. But I did want to paint mine with all of the details, which you will see here in a second. So I just gave these two good coats of my cashew chalk paint. And because this is foam, I found that using like a dabbing motion with a little bit of excess paint onto my brush really covered in those holes of the foam and made it look a lot smoother and more realistic. And this did take a little bit of time, but it was no big deal. Y'all, I love to paint. I love doing this kind of stuff. So if something takes me a little longer than it's expected, I really don't mind that. However, if you're impatient, you can totally skip this step and just give it a nice smooth coat. I then blow dry it, but I did blow dry it on low heat because if you use heat too much with your blow dryer, that will also shrink your foam. So like I said, I removed the painter's tape and then I just kind of painted over the candlestick at the top where my painter's tape missed it and it got the cashew paint on it. And now I'm just going to start doing my details on the skull. So I paint the eyes and the nose. And then, of course, I painted some cracks all the way around the heads. I did go ahead and outline the teeth and just kind of brought out all of those features. Once I was done, I did go in with some more cashew and just kind of clean up all of the edges. Now, with the teeth, I tried to do like a skeleton face, but I really didn't like that. So I just covered that up and I liked it much better. 
Last but not least, I'm going to take this ribbon from Dollar Tree. I absolutely love the design with the skull and the Happy Halloween. Plus, I thought the orange really gave it a nice color to these plain skulls. Um, but you can let me know in the comments, would you guys have used a different ribbon or do you think this one goes with them well? But I just made two simple bows, tied them in the middle with some jute, cut the ends in dovetails, and then hot glued them to the candlestick right underneath the skeleton heads. And these were so easy to do so this is a perfect beginner project let me know in the comments would you guys be making these and that was it for this DIY I absolutely love the way that they turned out and like I said let me know what you guys think down below Okay, beautiful people, for the last and final DIY, we're gonna do an unfinished wood round from Dollar Tree. So I start off by taking off the jute hanger and then using some painter's tape in the back of the sign, flip it over and then cover those holes with some lightweight spackling also from Dollar Tree. Once that lightweight spackling was completely dry and I do do a very thin coat, that way it dries really quickly. And then I just sand that down smooth with my zip sander. Next, I'm gonna cut up this transfer and I love the fact that it has several different designs for fall and Halloween. I lay that on my sign to mark where I need to tape it off and then tape off that section and paint the middle with my pumpkin Waverly chalk paint with a distress coat. As always, if you don't like distressed, you can always give it a good coat. And as always, y'all know that I am extremely impatient. When I'm DIYing, I just like to go on to the next step super quickly. So once I was done painting this, I hit that with my blow dryer. And then the most satisfying part, which is why I like chalk tour so much, because it's kind of like peeling back painter's tape to reveal that nice crisp line. And then I'm just going to use the same exact tape. I'm going to tape the bottom and the top and then give those a distress coat of ink waverly chalk paint as well now i am just here for inspiration so if you do not like the colors that i used or if you guys don't have transfers or whatever the case may be just because i used one item i am just here for inspiration so if you guys have something different or if you could hand letter it it really doesn't matter just use me for inspiration use your imagination and i guarantee you guys can come up with something amazing but i do highly recommend these like i said they're just so easy to use they last forever and they're just absolutely amazing it's it's addicting anybody who uses chalk let me know down in the comments are you guys just as addicted as i am or am i a crazy person but anyway once my paint was completely dry then i'm going to lay down my transfer in the middle make sure that it is smoothed down really well so you don't have any bleeding and then I went ahead and transfer on the wording with my white chalk paste once again I peel back that transfer to reveal this amazing image wash my transfer let it dry and then we're going to move on to the next step transferring on the spider webs from the second sign on the top and the bottom I missed, I forgot to hit the record button, but you guys get the idea. And then I take these spiders from Dollar Tree. I cut off the part that goes into the metal clip. I glue that down at the bottom 
on top of the spider web. And originally I was just going to do one spider, but you'll see here in a minute that I do add another one. I'm pretty matchy matchy like that. I don't know, OCD. Um, but I do take this fabric. I believe I got this fabric at Walmart and I just cut a strip and made a bow out of it. Then I'm going to dovetail the ends. I also glue that to the top. Next, I take two pieces of this orange jute that I got from Dollar Tree. I make a finger bow out of it and then I glued that to the middle of our fabric bow. Once I was done gluing that down, then I did decide to go ahead and add a different or another spider, I should say, in the same spot but on the top going down and then y'all that was it for this sign that's why i love dollar tree wood rounds they are so easy to make and they come out absolutely stunning so that was it for this video you guys thank you so much for hanging out with me today again i'm sure you're tired of hearing it but i know people skip through um which if you guys watch my whole videos from start to finish, that is a free way to support me. It lets YouTube know that my content is good. Um, and also watching the ads is another free way to support me. Um, but I just did want to mention, I love y'all so much. Thank you for supporting me. And that is why I try to do everything I can to give back to y'all. So if you guys want my weight loss guide, or if you want to be put on my YouTube wait list, like I said, it will be linked in the description box as well as the pinned comment and I'm so excited to see you guys look and feel as good as I do so thank you for hanging out with me today if nobody has told you today you are absolutely stunning you are worthy you are gorgeous you can literally do anything you set your mind to coming from a heroin addict who is nine years sober you guys if I can do it I know that you can do it as well YouTube has completely changed my life Ch losing weight has completely changed my life and I just want to give that gift back to you guys with that being said I love you all so much I'll catch you in the next one bye check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right